They might talk about humor, music, film, books, football, and box sets, exercise, and maybe even food. Trivia and sport, politics and health, sometimes well-being too. On the life with Brian. On the life with Brian. Hello and welcome one and all to Life with Brian, the Brian McClare podcast, after a very short summer break, during which we've recharged our batteries ready for the season ahead. Mark here, doing the basic admin work with my co-host Matthew. Are you well, Matthew? Very well, thanks, Mark. Good to be back. And the show wouldn't be what it is without Brian now, would it? Chucky, what have you been up to over the summer? Because you've been very much playing up to your terrorist chant of being here, there and every fucking where. Well, yeah, it's once again, I had a little uh, nice little uh, weekend in the Republic of Ireland where I was uh, had the pleasure of wandering around the golf course. Uh, I know that Robert's a big uh, fan of golf. I mean, I, 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 I can hit it properly. Uh, it sometimes goes in the general direction of the pin, but that wasn't very often. Uh, but I had the pleasure of watching David May shoot uh, an incredible one over par in a very tough course and called Druid's Glen. I don't know if you played there, Robert, you know, but it's a beautiful course. Uh, but it was a lovely day, lovely weather then with a with the charity game uh, on Saturday, which I think went uh, down very well. Talking of golf, the last time I saw you, Brian, was at the Open Championship at Royal Liverpool in Heswell and uh, you were getting chastised for bringing... Uh, Bacon sandwiches out from the VIP tent to us <laughs> poor mortals out on the uh, on the course, but much appreciated. Hope you didn't get in too much trouble. Well, yeah, you know, I I did ask the guy later on that uh, after I'd been given mildly chastised for that, if I could take a tray of lager out, <laughs> and he said, mm, no, maybe not. I said, what if I take them out one at a time? Aye, that'll be okay. Yeah, he's fine. It's a guy who's from Glasgow as well. This lad, Robert, you know, the bouncer on the the door was from Glasgow. <laughs> I see, he's he's kind of laughing at me, you know. But, well, if I you don't did think bring, he recognised me. So, if you did bring the beers out, you didn't give them to us. It must have been. Nice. <laughs> I actually, uh, I did bring some beers out, but they were. Uh, I, I drank them myself. <laughs> I'll let you off. Okay, right. As usual, we've got a guest with us. Uh, he's most known as guitarist and songwriter with seminal Scottish indie band The Bluebells. Although he's collaborated with a host of other well-known acts. And being a Celtic fan of a certain age, not content with having seen Chucky bag a large number of his 126 goals in the hoops during the 1980s, he once had McClare dress up as one half of Wham! for a magazine (laughs) cover in his Glasgow flat. Uh, It's a big welcome to Robert Hodgins, a.k.a. Bobby Bluebell. Firstly, Bobby, how's it going? And secondly, care to explain how you managed to get Chucky to go public as George Michael? (laughs) Well, that was a good question, but it's actually in this flat he came up, him and Paul McStay. Uh, I think what happened was I was just writing for a magazine called Cut, and um, I met Paul a few times, and obviously Brian was a big star there at the time, and they just looked like two guys that should be in a band, you know, they, and they both had kind of like um, musical interests, you know, Paul was at school with two of the Bluebells. And Brian was probably in Boston at that time, so I'm not sure I can gather. <laughs> 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 But they came up and uh, it was a great day, actually, to tell you the truth, because I was, I'm always very thrilled to meet football players because I think I love football. But um, they were just very, very forthcoming about, the, about their opinions. I mean, I don't know a lot of footballers who aren't intelligent, but they, but, they, but Paul and Brian came across as being very intelligent, very aware of what was happening, because uh, I always thought that the music business and the football business were very similar, you know, young boys gambling on their careers, really, because they... Uh, I think the ratio of people making it in the music business and the football world are very, very short. You know, I think maybe, obviously, one in a thousand people are going to make it, probably even more, Brian. Eh? But uh, I just think that you that, that you take the gamble, you realise that your education isn't going to probably finish. You, you, you might be employed as a footballer. For, you can, I mean, anything can happen. You could get injured. You could get dropped. You know, other players come along. And, and the music business is very similar. You know, you, you, it's all very dependent on results. Either you write a hit song or you don't have a music career. And in football, I guess, you either win or you don't have a football career, you know. So so I guess it's it's the same thing. So did it take much persuasion? I mean, how did you pitch it to the guys that you, you've been addressing? It was, it was a fucking con. <laughs> so, let's get both sides of the story. Then. I mean, I I told us. 
Yeah. Well, I think Paul was definitely going to do it. And I think Brian just thought if, if Toledo's going to do it, if the Maestro's going to do it, then I better do it as well. Oh, you know. But uh, I mean, it, it, Brian looks very different now. You know, back then he was he was like a very um, a, what would you say? He looked like looked like, like a young guy in a band, man. So it's that, what else can you say? You know? Yeah. You, come on, Brian. Why don't you defend yourself then? Why don't you... I can't defend myself. Well, there are the pictures are all over the place that you've seen. Yeah. Was, you know, but you just, said it was a car. Told that he asked us to bring a leather jacket, and uh, <laughs> I think I've had a heart. I think the heart's mine as well. And yeah. Paul, I don't know, it's because Paul's next name is the heart, you know. So, but don't forget, I didn't do. I've, I did. I just wrote the story. What you what you get in news? No, 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 no. But I mean, like. I don't know if they might have told this story or not, but there's two different things. The reason I've still got this, uh, I've still got it. Uh, if yeah. I went up the loft and got it, found it, because I knew... I've still got it too, yeah. Because I'd moved recently, I knew it was lying about. My dad used to get everything I was in, and uh, that was one of the things he... he, he I might have bought it and let him see it, you know, because it, it was... It, I've just been reading some stuff there. I was, I was obviously uh, very um, opinionated then, I mean, I could have stopped voicing my opinion because I kept getting stitched up by headlines all the time. But uh, and the other kind of time around about that was the um, the Sunday Sport got launched round about the same time, Bobby, and John Gregg got the job as the the, the sports editor of the the, uh, the Sport on Sunday. But nobody had any idea what this paper was going to be. It was very, very secretive about it. So John had got this thing and he uh, contacted me to see if I would be interested in doing it. And I thought, well, John Gregg, legend of Rangers, he can't really be turning down the chance to have a chat with John Gregg about football. And I told my dad, you know, I've done this, there's a new sports paper coming out, you know, like the Italian Carriero della Sport and um, French ones and all that, and Spanish papers and all that kind of thing. And they said, look, uh, you, do, you can go and get it on Sunday, you know. So it comes out, and I still hadn't seen it. And, and I went round, we used to go round to you know, my mum and dad's for, for lunch on Sunday. And they came round, and they, my dad's incandescent, isn't he? And I'm going, What was what you, you told me to get this? And he didn't really swear, my dad. He's going, You get me the bloody hell, Jesus, Mary, Joji. What the, what the hell is this all about? And, he, and I was like, Oh my God, what is that? And I was like, Oh, and I didn't know anything about it. I, I promised I didn't know anything about it. Nobody mentioned it. About it. And John Gregg resigned when he saw it come out. As well, because he didn't know anything about it, and he was actually employed by them. So I don't, I don't, still don't have the copy of the Sunday Sport, you know. But I, have, <laughs> so, yeah. I would have went straight in the bin, Robert, you know, straight after he I showed me that, and he'd, he'd agree. <laughs> I'd like to see what I'd said in that, but oh, it was just so embarrassing, really, you know. So, so you, uh, you, but you trusted uh, Robert, obviously, to not stitch you up on this this occasion. But what? I mean, but there, there was scant knowledge about what it was because we ended up being there all day, really. You know, yeah. so we what, just what, asked what to bring along. It was a good day, I, I would did, yeah. yeah, we did. It was just like a, it was a nice day. <laughs> you look like you were wearing makeup, or is that just the quality of the? Product? I don't know. I don't know. I, I can't remember. Well, I know yeah, there was there was more people. Color. There was more people just yeah, in, uh, photographers there and all that kind of stuff and, and uh, all that kind of gear going on at the time. Yeah, but it was, and obviously some of my family were there as well. You know, but. Um, but there was no makeup involved in it, and also a lot, a lot of the things that we didn't really do the interview then, didn't we? We, we did more or less just did the photos and just talked, and then uh, I think that the interview was more was more of the conversation that me and Paul and Brian had over a couple of days. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah. 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 And, um, and and it's funny because like um, I mean Pat and Evans always thought of as being the kind of music buff in in the in the football world, I guess you know. But I, I thought uh, that. Paul and Brian had very good knowledge of music. Had. <laughs> no, well, I, I saw you recently and you've still got that knowledge of music. Oh, I, yeah, no. the, uh, Let's talk about yesterday. Yeah. This, this is for, for listeners. This is the day after. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm so going to get one one other way. Yeah. I'm going to say that bit, right? I'm not. Right. Okay. Right. I'm getting half decent allowing people who have no idea what we're doing to, to say. <laughs> anyway, let's talk about Rangers versus Celtic yesterday. Two yeah. things. Um, what did you think about the game? And the thing that that that, that I'm bemused and befuddled by, and I know that you you've lived in Glasgow all your, all yeah. your life, by that that period of time you're in London, is uh, right. So you wanted to talk about the game and what you thought about the performance and any particular players, but also, uh, as I say, the thing that I'm mystified by is why supporters of the the same team after the game would fight with each other in the stands. Yeah. I can't get that either. I mean, 
it's, it, it, Glass is a strange place, as, as you, you know, Brian, but maybe the guys don't realise. But yesterday we watched it in, in Tenants, and there was Rangers fans there, and the Celtic fans there. Ah, and that, guess it, yeah, because the last oh, time I was in there, that was exactly the same, game, yeah. Before the game, I wished each other a lot. My father was a big Rangers supporter, you know. Uh, I, I mean, the Bluebells is kind of like, seen, can you see, kind of camp Bluebells down that? We didn't realise at the time that we, we weren't thinking of football at all, but, but, I, I, we don't buy into that. I, I don't want to buy into that uh, stuff. I, I, I don't care if someone's bigoted. That's that's their problem, do you know what I mean? Because like, the whole world's bigoted in some way or another, you know. And there's, there's always there's always an opposing point of view or someone just doesn't like you, you know. And if, if it's, and if it's it, it, it could be specky, red hair, it could be skinny, fat, big ears, Catholic, Protestant, Jewish. It, it, it's. I think it's more painful for the person who's bigoted. To be honest, you know that they're, they're closing so many doors on themselves. You know that. that it, 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 I mean, but football is a good example for football players. Like, I was playing golf with this football player one time, and he'd had a a bargy, Archie bargy in the pitch with a Rangers player, and I said to him, well, "So, what, what do you think about that today?" And he goes, "I could be in that guy's team next week. I could be his manager next week." He says, "We don't think about it at all. It's just, it's just, it's gone." Do you know what I mean like you know because they. It, basically, this is a job, you know. Football, is, as we've noticed in the last few months, money's money's a big driver now, Brian. I don't know if it was in in in, in your in your day, you know, but especially in the music business and especially in football, it, it, it seems to be a lot of talk about how much people are getting paid. We never knew that before. I, I, I don't have a clue what you got paid back then. I wasn't interested. I mean, you were interested in what I was getting getting paid. We were just we were just enjoying life, no. you know. We, yeah. we, we were just living it, you know. You know, the bills were getting paid, the things that you were doing. Now now it seems to be at the structures in place where everything I don't care how much that guy costs yesterday. Do you mean Danilo or who he is? It doesn't matter. Do you mean I don't care how much, you know, uh, that you could have to pay Matt Riley to stay. But this seems to be the conversation people have in pubs now, you know. <laughs> Before it was never I can't remember anyone talking about people's wages or, you know, oh. contract lengths, you know. Well, that's, I mean, it's a really, I mean, I look, I had a look at a couple of things in the Scottish papers just while well, I was doing some research as well. And, and they're saying things like you're, that you're on about now. They're on about, they're basically saying in the, the opinion, and these are people who have been writing in papers for a long, long time. They're not, they're not newbies that after, um, four games, isn't it? four league games, then yeah. there's, there's certain players for, uh, Rangers who whose careers are already over. And, and I'm like, my God, you know that's the. I mean, that would be. T- you know, I'm trying to think back to when I played that, and particularly when I went to Man United, it was yeah. two games and that ago. You'd have been you'd have been out the door. Four, yeah, four goal, four games or something before I scored the goal. And then you know, you so three three league completely. games, three league games, Is it three league games. Yeah, something. Like that. But now they're they're actually saying that you know using. Um, Tombstones is a, is a, an analogy for these football players, you know, that, 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 are, that are clearly not good enough after one old film game. And okay, they've, they've lost two of those games. But um, if you'd watched them, um, I don't know if you were at the game having your uh, steak and prawn sandwiches last Saturday, Bobby, against St. Johnston. Yeah, but, but I'm a bit but, 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 that, <laughs> but, but that was... Um, but that was, you know, after watching that game, you weren't going into the game yesterday full of confidence, you know. So, what, what did you think about the performance? Bobby? Yesterday, I thought it was great. I mean, it, it, it's interesting because, uh, you know, obviously Ben Rogers is a good manager, right? I'm lucky to be friends with a couple of managers too, and like they've got no doubt that they, they know that you know what the process is involved. You know what I mean, right? You know, how each game and each each team you play against. Different things happen. Also, I think luck, like you mentioned, golf, right? Luck's got a lot to do with it too. So I think it's scored three or four goals. We just kind of got away with that foul yesterday. You know what I mean? Like, it, 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 it so you, you th- you're saying it's part. definitely a foul? Oh, absolutely. 100% a foul, man. Yeah. I mean, there's no doubt about it. <laughs> I mean, but there, there isn't, but also, I mean, you're missing out the fact that, like, uh, there should be penalties for, for uh, Kelgo getting absolutely shoved around in the box twice, you know what I mean? Like the ball's in play, you know, you can't just throw players down at the ground, you know, it doesn't matter if the ball's near them or not, you can't you can't do it. But it doesn't matter, we play better than Rangers. They're a, they're a better team, it doesn't mean we're a, we're a finished article or Rangers are a terrible team. You know, it, it was a good old firm game, it, it could have went either way, right? I did, if, you know, the, the first goal was offside, obviously, right? But if it hadn't been offside and they scored an early goal, 
you don't know what, what would have happened in that game. But, but, but John, the, the, the main point for me were people like John Scales. I thought Joe Hart had a really good game. Obviously McGregor. You know, all the players, all the players that needed to come through, he came through for us. You know, and, and for Rangers, I don't think so much. Something I just picked up on there, you, Robert. You said your dad was a, a big. Rangers fan. Yeah. Do, we, does that mean you were almost tempted to jo- join the dark side? How did that come oh, about? My, my, first, my, my dad was from Govan, so the first game I went to was actually a Rangers game against Hamilton, the Cup by Ibrox. But I went to a Catholic school, and you know, my, my dad was smart enough to realise that if I was going to hang about with my pals, we weren't going to be hanging about going to see Rangers. You know what I mean? And it, 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 my, my dad married a Catholic, Italian Catholic, and the, it was, I mean, it may be a romanticised it, but I, I don't think it was anything like what it was now. There was no one wore football strips or tops. People went to football matches and put their clothes on, do you know what I mean? Couldn't afford that. Clothes, do you know what I mean, right? You know, yeah, they didn't. And also afterwards, I mean, Alaska's a very mixed city. You, you can't really go, I mean, now there seems to be Catholic pubs and Rangers pubs. Well, I, didn't, I, I, I don't really remember that. Maybe I'm maybe I've, I'm lost in the midst of time somewhere, but it, it, it does strike a chord with me. I mean, I remember when Celtic won a European Cup, they came past our house, they paid with West on the bus. All my neighbours were out on the street, you know, cheering the bus down. And then when the Ibrox disaster happened, my dad was at that game and we lived very close to the ground. The whole community was affected by that. It wasn't like, you know, it was, it was, it was such, I mean, also, Brian, you know, don't you, Brian, better. I mean, the players go to each other's funerals, the Celtic players are friends, you know. The Celtic's best players were Protestants for at one point, you know, and their manager was... Protestant, most of the Rangers team they were Catholic. I mean, even if they want to admit it, it is. They are. So, I mean, the, 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 the lines are so blurred in reality, but but in this kind of myth making world, the really the, the separation is, is supposed to be intense. Well, I watch games with the Rangers fans, you know, and, and, and St. Johnson fans, and however, we don't we don't buy any of it. So, I, I just hope I, I hope there's more people like us out there. Yeah. Um, I believe you were at a game at Ibrox where they were singing about you. Yeah, I, I went with, you, to with your dad. Yeah. With your dad, is that is that right? It was Mark, Martin Bain was the, the CEO there, and he invited my dad down because he knew he was just fan. And you know, it was under obviously some sort of like ruse, which I found out later on. But uh, he invited us down. It was against Aberdeen. He took my dad to meet this player called Willie Woodburn, who was still alive and my dad's favourite player. The guy who was banned for life is my dad's favourite player. Banned for violent conduct. <laughs> I mean, like, it just says a lot about my dad, by the way, right? But uh, so my dad gets dressed up, he's got his crombie on, and the whole thing, his suit and tie, and they go to Ibrox and, and um, run, run, a, run the trophy room and we have dinner with the board and all that sort of stuff. They run the, run the director's box, it's Walter Smith and Ian Durant and all that. Watch the game. Rangers, of course, are getting beat by Aberdeen, unfortunately. And then uh, half time, as we're about to leave to go downstairs, Overcomes the tannoy saying, uh, ladies and gentlemen, it's part of the uh, Rangers anti bigotry campaign. We've invited the all-known Celtic support Bobby Bluewell and his father to the, to the game today. And immediately, <laughs> it's who's the in the box starts getting lines, right? You know, and then Bobby Bluebell, you're a wanker, right? And my dad stands up and starts going to the people in sight. No, he's not a wanker. He's not. Stop it. Like, you know, like all, you know, with protective. If she goes, get your coat, we're leaving. So we go down, we go downstairs to the director's walk. I mean, to the, to the boardroom. He goes to the, the waitress, bring us the bill. We're leaving. She goes, Mr. Hodgins, there's no bill. You're the guest of the club. And he goes, bring us two whiskeys. <laughs> <laughs> and we go back upstairs to the box where I sit down all the second half, getting abused. And then, uh, but in a funny way, don't, trust me when I say abused, I knew, I knew that if it had been the other way around at, at Parkhead, then my Rangers fan part would have got the same thing, you know. But at the end of it, they come and say, it's like, it's better if you leave the ground. <laughs> you got escorted out. But it's funny because yesterday Neil, Neil was doing the commentary, uh, 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 Neil Lennon was doing the commentary at uh, 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 Celtic, and I was just saying to him beforehand, how are you going to get out of there? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? You know, could have been there for hours, but he might actually still be there. You never got, did you get any, I'm sure I've asked you this before, maybe I haven't, did you get any hairy moments, Brian? Did you ever have anything, you know, you ever chased out of a restaurant or uh, well, no, no, not just no, for not no, paying no, the bill? But, I mean. but, but as similar, Ken, I, when, I, we, we all went, um, it seems to we, we, when, when I, the first year I was at United that season, 87, we went back for an old firm game. There was about 11 of us went to the game with the next year, you know, different players in Gordon Strachan played, played then for Aberdeen and you had uh, Paul McGrath who's Republic of Ireland player you had me 
but there was some other ones as well. Uh, who I think we went along. One of my neighbour used to be Derek Parlane, who'd played for Rangers. Uh, and so, so there was a few who had tickets for Rangers part of it. And in, and in those days, it, there was a Celtic part of it. It's not, and maybe we were in the main stand. I think maybe we in the main stand, but, uh, I got, I got challenged in the boardroom after by some you know, idiot, really, you know. Yeah, just, I think it's Celtic. The Rangers, they hadn't won the game. I can't kind of remember Celtic had won. Yeah, I think Celtic did win and they just got challenged by somebody. It was, what are you doing here? You know, you shouldn't be allowed in this. And are you, why, you know, why not really? You know, so, um, the only, the, well, there was one hairy moment when I was, uh, sense of reputational rather than, um, anything, um, uh, well, there's two things happened. We, we were, we, when we were united, there was a lad who used to do the security, um, who, who always claimed he was in the SAS, Robert, you know, we used to take the piss out <laughs> and go on. Fucking, why, why would, why would anybody tell he, he'd been in the SAS, you know, like, you know, because of secret sort of. Exactly. Anyway, we, we got, he took us to the SAS place in Hereford. <laughs> and we went there and to this, and it was, and it was an, I want an eye on play. This, there was like, the thing that struck me was the number of Scots that were there and the number of, of non English really that were there, you know, there were Scots, Irish, Welsh, and there were some, some English people there, but we had been invited in the evening to the officer's mess for dinner. So we went to the officer's mess and at the bar, two guys asked me about, where, where two of their two the SAS lads who were Scottish lads, clearly Ranger supporters, um, what I felt about the political situation in Northern Ireland. And I'm like, oh, why, why are you asking me this about the... And and somebody must have overheard them and kind of took them away. So then there was no other conversation. But the benefit of that, I'm sitting thinking, I'm not going to see these bumping into these guys later on because everybody's getting pissed, right? Because that's what they do, you know, because that's a thing off and get pissed. And then uh the there was just this alarm went off and they all fucked off. All of them got up and went. And uh, all that was left was the was the women and us. Uh they're they're mainly ex wives, right? Because and then they were, were chatting <laughs> yeah. chant to them about what it was like to be married to these to these guys, you know. And I said, Why where are they all gone? He says they all they've been called out. And and they just go, they go, they get out, they go, they go and get the kit and they're, they're, wherever they go. Wherever wow. they have to go, they, they, they were away. So that was I was very relieved. There was, did, you, did you know it's sitting in, in Manchester? Were you aware of a kind of big division in Manchester between football fans when you when you were playing there? No, no, no. It's not. It's not. And there's nothing. There's nothing. Like, I mean, there's. I've, I've been in different parts of the world, and there are um, situations where you have to. Uh, there's a there's a, a ground uh, in or two grounds. Sorry, in uh, in Buenos Aires, that uh, families still support one of the two different teams, and they have to walk a different way to the game depending on wh- which stadium the derby game is on. And it's as close as they are, or, or as they are probably in in Dundee. But it's just that day, yeah. You know, it's just that it's just that day. The next day, they're all, you know brothers and sisters. I, I, and I remember the going, next day they're all fine, you know, but. What do you think about but not having any away fans at the games? Then, isn't that? Just- oh no, I think it's rubbish because I was just saying to somebody the other day that that well, it's for both sides. I said that whether it's at Ibrox or whether it's at Celtic Park, the fact that you've got these huge things creating the atmosphere, um, so uh, was 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 great. I mean, because of the the influence of um, the the media now, particularly. The broadcast media, television, the games are always on, nearly always at twelve o'clock. But the best atmosphere I had been at a game, I, uh, not that I wasn't playing as a supporter, was uh, the game, the old firm midweek game, where there was the, the like under the lights. I thought that 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 atmosphere yeah. was incredible, and it's generated by both sides. So yesterday, when Celtic score, there's nothing, you know, and I know some way that it might be pleasing, but there's no. No noise at all. <laughs> so, you know, apart from maybe the Celtic bench getting up, you know, and, yeah. I, I, and it, and it, and if football was about being being brave about playing in places like this where where there is a an intensity of rivalry, whether it's Anfield, Highbrox, uh, Elland Road, uh, Main Road, Highbury, 
it's about being able to go there and, and beat the crowd as well as trying to beat the opposition, you know. It must be the only country in the world where opposing fans are actually banned from going to another stop from going to another. No, oh, there is in South Africa, South America. You hear about it all the time. Really, that opposing fans can't go to the games in South Africa. Yeah, yeah, South America. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's like somewhere like um, Brazil. Yeah, yeah. Brazil. Brazil. Yeah, 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 Brazil. Ajax and Ajax can't go to Feyenoord either. You're listening to Life with Brian. I'm just waiting for Sparky to do his own podcast, but this one came along <laughs> first. So, Chocky will back me up on this. Anything deep fried tastes <laughs> great. <laughs> it was uh, Robbie Williams, and he's like, Dominic, you survived the nineties as well. How did we do it? Subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. Yeah, uh, we can't really talk to you, Robert, and not mention Young at Heart. Um, yeah. The the Bluebells version is so distinctive and popular, but it, it was only in prepping for this episode that I actually heard the original recording by Bananarama for the first yeah. time, which is which is very, very different. Um, I would say that it's got a, quite a teeny bopper Motown feel. Yeah, well, um, when we, we first did it. We did it, we did it that way, the Bluebells, for a long huh? time. The Northern Soul thing. I did it, me and Siobhan did it together. We were both Northern Soul fans, and then... It was, it, it was, it, I did write it for Brian Allen, but you know, the intention of them doing it. But um, I was very disappointed, so she won actually, too, with, with the actual recording that Jolly and Swain did. And we were on the same record label. And then um, we we stopped doing it live that way after they brought that out. And we started messing about with doing it like a sort of Bob Dylan, uh, you know, a I want you kind of vibe, you know, kind of like a, a shuffle. <laughs> and then um, the, the record company guy was a guy called Roger Ames, and he just put out Dexies out, and it'd be number one. And you could you could hear sort of similarities between Young at Heart and and, and the Dexies coming on Eileen. So he really encouraged us to go and record it that way, which we did up in the Highlands. And and we had a we're going to have a fiddle on it because there's a record we really like called uh, Jiggy Jig Based of Eden. It's a famous kind of Scottish chart record in the seventies. So we had the fiddle on it, and once he heard it, he just decided to bring it as a single, and it, it got to in the top ten in eighty four. And it was just, they are very, they're, they're the same song. All songs can be done in any any kind of fashion, you know. What Young at Heart, Banana Rama one lacks is the, is the chorus we were singing. We sang the, yeah, they don't have that anywhere in, in, in the song, you know. Mm-hmm. For some reason, the, uh, Jolly Swain didn't want that bit in it, which I don't, don't get to this day, you know. But, um, but yeah, we did it, we did the song with them together, a, a Gary Crowley thing in London, you know, we played it in a, they sang on it and we played our version and they sang on it. And I, I still think some along the line that would be a smash if they just did it, if they did it together, you know, with them singing the, the, uh, the way we, we played with them at Edinburgh Castle a few years back and we played the Shakespeare's sister as well, I think. And then this, you know, they're great girls. I mean, if you, I think, like I said, she wanted them into a fantastic songwriter, you know, and, and so did, so did Sarah and Karen, Karen too, but, I think they're much underrated, that band, you know, a bit like ourselves. I think a lot of, um, I think music seems to get, you know, like, people don't notice how good it is at the time. I'm talking more about Bagarama and us. And then years later, they realise how how much apart, how, how good that music is. People might be the same thing. I think people don't yeah. realise how players, how good they were when they were actually playing. Paul McStay, I'd say, is a perfect example of that. No, there are players that the same thing. I, I agree with that. Yeah, there is. But I think a lot of that's down to because of what product has been in that period since then, isn't it? I mean, you go, yeah. oh, this is an- anodyne pish, you know, and yeah. you go, oh, by the way, I didn't really realise how good that was. Just well, George a piece Michael, of trivia he, for he, you. He was even Oh, well, yeah. I, 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 yeah. Um, <laughs> hang on, my <laughs> oldest child is called Siobhan because of Siobhan. Oh, very good. Very good. That's great. I have to tell yeah, that. It, it was the first time that I'd seen the name, and, wow. I, and then I was like, oh, "Why these? What, what kind of names that? You know?" Because it, 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 she would say, "Oh, Siobhan and blah, blah, blah. and then she saw it written down. I'm like, "How yeah, is that? How is that? that? How is that, Siobhan?" <laughs> all the way through, all the all the way through my maybe like yourself as well, but all the way through my life, I've had to spell McLear. Right yes. from the moment I went into primary school. Yeah. All the way through my life, it's M C C L A. It's it's a tedious process. So yes. them being her being the first one and being a McLaren, I thought, well, she might as well spell her Christian name as well as a surname that she's going to have to have to do. <laughs> so, 
and it's also Siobhan. So that's so people uh, nice say name. it's not still not very not very popular name in, in England and that you know, so lots of people go Siobhan and then you write it and go, How how's that? How's that Siobhan? It was <laughs> I like your name, you know. So So around that time, so, Robert, uh, you were um, you were actually Siobhan. Cheap Siobhan Fahi was your girlfriend, wasn't she? I mean yeah. um how was it? sort of being part of this pop power couple and, and of course hanging around with all these other cool kids of the eighties who were in that, in that scene, you know, did, did, did you make a lot of good friends or was, was yeah. there a lot of sort of edgy characters who were always looking at you with a side eye, you know, always a little bit envious or, or a little bit jealous of each other's success? Not that I noticed. I mean, I, I hadn't, I had never actually spent overnight with a girl before, right. To tell you the truth, man, right. So I was all of a sudden I'd, I'd left home, moved down and lived in a house with Siobhan and Sarah and Karen, and their two boyfriends. It was a real culture shock, you know, and then going from being in the rock garden to being in the wag club, you know, the mud club, but, you know, and hanging about with bona fide pop stars. First time I went to Top of the Pops was actually with Siobhan and, and Brian Ram, and, and uh, I'm all in the charts with Captain Sensible with Happy Talk. And I remember just feeling euphoric because it was like, I loved that song, you know. I just thought everything you wanted and your life was kind of there at one at one moment, you know, and, and it was, um, yeah, it was, it was really inspiring, you know. And but again, you, you're going from hanging about with, you know, pop stars in Glasgow, great pop stars like Edward Edmund and Claire to Kevin Rowland and Paul Wells and people like that, you know. And so there was it. it, it, it it's the same that I guess I get going back to the people and Archie Prime leaving Celtic, and all of a sudden he's hanging about, you know, Manchester United. I mean, it's a whole different step up. No offense to Celtic, but. The glass, Manchester United are probably one of the most glamorous clubs in the world, if not the most glamorous club in the world. So, you know, it, taking the ball out, you, you, you adapt or you die, as they say, you know, and I was very good at adapting. And then years later, when I was working with our, our then husband, uh, Dave Stewart, he was taking me around the world and it was, it was a very much a similar situation. You'd be in LA or wherever you'd be working. You just had to go on with it. You couldn't really, you know, it was, if you hesitate for a second, as Brian has mentioned about football too, someone else goes on the pitch and takes your place, don't they? You know, so you've got you've got to kick you well, know, it's, and you know you oh, talk, yeah yeah you can't be shy, you know. Yeah, talking about attempting to take your place, did uh, John Taylor Duran Duran not attempt? He did, to take yeah, your he, place. He, 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 yeah, he yeah. I don't know why he was taking piss to this day, man, or if he's being serious. <laughs> he just kept asking me if she had a boyfriend, and I kept saying, "Yeah, I'm a boyfriend," and he just ignoring me, going out. Oh, <laughs> Find out she's got a boyfriend. I'm going, yeah, I, I'm her boyfriend. I mean, just for about an hour, you know, like, and then... Uh, but do you not think it's saying, all right, they'll no, finish the story on you go Well, I, I think it's quite a good wind up. But then if you kept saying things like, uh, you know, like, uh, oh, she's leaving now. I goes, I goes, yeah, I know, we're leaving. Who do you know she's going with? I'm going, yeah, she's going with me. We're, we're leaving together. Like, it was like, you know, I met him years later, man. He had no idea what... I think he was like, he's trolling, man. But it, it was funny. But again, it... it Did they not go and up it, and ask her, no? Well, don't forget, maybe a lot of people were, were interested in me back then as well. She was dead or something. No, no, but I'm saying, did he not go and ask her? Did, did he no, not he ask her? No, but I, could, I mean, the funniest thing was when, when they talked about Banana Rama, right? I say, when Robert Dero took, invited them out, you know, like for a drink and all that. It, it was Sarah, he, he was, he, he really fancied, you know. So, I mean, it's like, they're all good looking girls, and but the whole world's for good looking girls, you know, and, and geeky guys. No. Did you not? Do you not fancy saying to John Taylor, right? Come on outside, and we'll sort this out. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, he was so good looking. I would have got off of him if I'd been single, man. <laughs> yeah, he, he might not have been after you finishing. I can imagine. I can imagine. I can imagine that's John Taylor's uh, pickup line all the time. You know, I don't. I don't think he probably gets turned down even to this day very often. <laughs> Can you imagine, do you know what I mean? Like, you know, I think it was just having a last man. But I mean, I thought it was—I thought it was funny at the time. But I like the story, but because it's, it was like you know, it's, I mean, sometimes you are there, like you know, like like you, you're just in a situation. You're in a band, but you're not. In a, you're not a very, you know, you're with real superstars. You know what I mean? Like you're just in the room, as you call it. You know what I mean? You know, it's like, but you've just got you've got to get on with it. You know, it's like you. It's, you're, it allowed it's, you, you know, then. You know, this you found. This newfound fame allowed you to uh, appear on television, and yeah. I was very interested to see whether it was the old grey whistle test, yeah. top of the pops, was, still yeah. game. Yes, or this was your favourite memory of television. I, I think my favourite one has to be top of the pops when they actually use the word number one. But the first time of the top of the pops was euphoric as well. You know, like I mean, and going back to the to the team thing, Brian. 
it's nothing better. See, if, if you're in, if you see a beautiful sunset on your own, right, it's just you that's seen it, right? But see, if you're on top thoughts with your two best friends, you know, or your, th- your five best friends, that's a shared experience. I mean, it's like you winning trophies or scoring goals. Yeah. People come and say, well done. You know what I mean? And you've got a whole stadium full of people saying, you know, it, the shared experience is the thing that makes it, you know, that it's, it's this very little uh, fun and, and, you know, it's like playing golf, right? You had a great shot on your own. <laughs> You know, you turn around, you know, like, <laughs> it's, it's like, you know, it's, it's not the same. I mean, so it's, that's the thing that I like golf too, you know, it's like, again, it's a shared experience, you know. So it definitely wasn't Tizwas. I love Tizwas too, but I love them all, man. I love Tigers. <laughs> my favourite second one was Pop Quiz when, when I was in the team, you know. Like, and Pop oh, Quiz, oh, I love that. Yeah, and that yeah, was, I love that. I loved that favorite, you know, that was a great, yeah. was older and all that. I love to have been on that. It was, yeah. I, wish, I wish it was back on. I wish it uh, in the same form. I wish we were still in a band big enough to go on those things, you know. We uh, we almost have our version of Pop Quiz, don't we, Mark, now and again that comes on. But we, which, we'll, we, which we'll be touching on later in this show. Uh, don't worry. Do it for sure, man. That'd be a great podcast. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, well, since the Blue Bells, um, you've regularly written and collaborated with some pretty stellar names. Uh, who have you taken the most pleasure out of working with? Well, all of them. I mean... I, I, I did the thing last week in Refringe, and it was that was one of the questions. And in the audience, with and the guy said, uh, "What motivates you? And what's your favourite songs about that you've written?" I was said the ones that made the most money, you know. And <laughs> because I mean, that's all that, again, as we go back to what I was saying before, that's how you measure success. I mean, unfortunately, people have to buy it. It's popular music, you know. There's there's no art in a vacuum. The more people who like it, the better I like it, if that makes any sense. And but uh, people that stand out, obviously people at Texas, because Charlene's such a great a great singer and you know, she in the corner stands out, you know, because that was just a sublime moment when she when someone sings a song you've written and it just takes it to another another level. That's that's a great the great pleasure of, of, of doing that, you know. But uh, same when Kane sings the songs, all, all the songs I've done are you have to love them. Do you mean it's like I, I tell you a great quote by uh, Sting? Sting said that uh, someone say it doesn't like one of his songs. It's like saying his wife's ugly. You know, mm. <laughs> <That's> exactly. <laughs> yeah, you know I mean, you know, because if you don't like my song, it kind of hurts me because I put my heart and soul into it. Do you know what I mean like you know? So it's like that's what I, I think people in, in bands and maybe footballers too. All we really want since we were really young is approval. We want. I, I lacked a lot of confidence. I still do, believe it or not, but especially when I was young. So you want people to say, well, you want the constant, you know, approval. You, you, you want validation all the time. You want someone to say, you're good, you're good, you know? And it, and that, that that's a, 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 that's a real driving force, you know, in, in, in music. People, you know, people in, in music, there's lots of Elton Johns out there, you know, these, we guys, you know, not very attractive for glasses who, Really want to go on in music, do you know what I mean, right? You know, and it does open doors like, like it with, with girls or partners, you know, it opens doors like Brian saying about TV programs. But most importantly, it, the boost of your confidence it, it is really important, you know, it's like a drug, really, you know. I was just going to say, was that the same, Brian, as a footballer? Did it open doors for uh, meeting young ladies? Uh, no, no, no idea about that. So I wasn't. I'd already had a young lady. Oh, no, I'm not talking days, about you. So I'm not talking about you in particular. Oh, yeah. I mean, of course it does. It's the same thing. Yeah. You, I mean, I remember being in a, in a nightclub with when gigs he was there and it seemed to be really, really busy until I moved to the, to the side and everybody, it was just everybody who was doing gigs. It wasn't actually that busy, you know. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, yeah, clearly there was a, yeah. Yeah, I, I was, I was, yeah. Well, I mean, that, that was, I was approached by a, a famous uh, um, uh, interviewer in, uh, at uh, an opening of, um, well, it's just as an example, get invited to Bill Wyman's Sticky Fingers restaurant when it opens in Manchester. So we got invited along. So there you go, that's something I am. But while you're there, somebody says to me, can you come on, you, you know Ryan, you play with Ryan, can you get him on? get him on my programme, he keeps refusing to get on, and I was laughing away, going, well, knowing what it looks like, you're just going to take the piss out of him anyway, you know, so no wonder he's not going to appear on it. No, come on, please, tell him, tell him that if he comes on this, the show, I'll get one of the assistants to give him a blowjob. <laughs> and I was like that. What, what was he I called? Was like, uh, 
I was like, well, so I was thinking, you know, so I thought, no, um, no. But, a poor guy, man. Did well, you know? <laughs> well, we never been to anything quite like that, but there was there was moments. There was some moments, man. What I like yeah, there is. I mean, there's still, there's, there's still things happen. I mean, that's what I'm saying. I'm going playing Druids Glen. Well, I'm not playing. I was on the golf course. I, I got closest to the pen in one, sh- one hole. So I've got one hole that's like a, an Augusta hole with water in front of it. And I end up putting it five feet from the pen. So as far as I'm concerned, I overachieved, you know. So, yes. Um, but it, you, you're, you're, you're getting that chance. You're, you're meeting people and you're getting a, a free couple of drinks, and then the next day it's game, and you've got a free dinner. So I, I, I yeah, yeah, look at several place. days a year, I'm getting a free night out, and sometimes mm. it's a lovely place I'm in, and a lot of the times it's some good people who are just telling you nice things. So yeah. Just thank you, Lucky Stars, you're not playing these days, because you wouldn't be able to go to those kind of bars and do that kind of thing. I imagine these ah, guys see, I don't, I, to... I'm not sure that would have changed the way I was. I mean, I... I I wanted to be, I mean, I, I, people say to me now, I'm sure the same as yourself, Robert, when you, I say, look, I'm not any different. I'm not any better, any worse than anyone else. I just had an extraordinary life or career or hobby. I say it's a hobby now because I, I, I feel embarrassed to say that I've done any work, Robert, you know, it's just yeah. it's like, cause you, you yeah, I know I did, I know I did some effort into it and I started with a very young age, but. It's, it was so enjoyable and it's still enjoyable when, when you're spending time with people who are telling you. And, and I know it's the same with the musicians, but I'm a lot better player. I'm a much better player now than I was when I was playing because people tell me all the time. <laughs> That's good, man. Are you still coaching? In my head, does I'm like that. No, no, I, don't, I haven't done any of that for a while now. So. Do you miss, uh, you miss so, it? Yeah. No, I, I, I look at it the other way around. I mean, I look at it from that wee boy who thought about being a professional, but being football, playing football and yeah. being successful as a football player, winning things, and then a post-football, for post-playing career, how long that lasted to where I am and what I'm doing now and go, wow, that's incredible. That, that, you'd have blown that wee boy's brains out if you'd have, you'd, if you'd have told them what you were going to be doing, you know. Uh, and like I say, doing this now, you know, it's like somebody said to me, I'd be sitting down and having a chat with you and that it's going to be out there for everybody to listen to, depending on how Mark decides to edit it or not. You know, it'll always be interesting. Because you're the of, guest, you will be the interesting part, I'll be the dull part, you know. So. <laughs> talking of talking of getting better with age and making comebacks, you you know, you had your, your big success that everyone remembers you for, yeah. Robert, in the in the eighties with, with the bluebells, but you you've kind of revisited that part of your life in more recent years, haven't you? Didn't you uh, you, you yeah, got, just, got the guys back together? Like revival at the moment we, we had they, they brought well it's coming out again. They, they brought our album out we had one album and then that did really well. So the record company asked us to do another record, which has done really well again. So we've just been lucky. It's been a great little period the, yeah. the last few years. Somebody, somebody yeah. bought it looking, Brian showed oh. it to the camera. <laughs> Thanks, Brian. Mm-hmm. I so. bought that. No, at the time, not recently. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly you got fan mail. Did you write back to it all? Sometimes, I mean... I did, did you get any weird requests? Not, not, re- not really. I mean, fan mail's like, a, a, it's funny, now you've got Twitter, right? So, like, Twitter's a really good thing and a, a bad thing sometimes. Twitter, you get asked to do things all the time and it's like, uh, we do a lot, we do a lot of charity work, but I mean, uh, but you know, there's no way of escaping now because it's public, you've been asked in public, do you know what I mean? So you kind of got, you, the expectations are higher, do you know what I mean? Right, you know, right, you know, I mean you must get the same thing too. It's it's so funny the way the world's changed. It's the one good thing about getting older is you it's like you I, I, you begin to understand nostalgia now, you begin to understand people saying it it was better in the old days because it kinda of was, right? You know, and I, and I mean that in, in in the sense that I mean bullying was just had to happen to your face. Now people get bullied by people they've never even met. Do you know what I mean, you know, like you know, yeah. people get abused by people they've never even met. You're never going to meet. Do you know what I mean, like, I, I think there's a good, it's a good thing and a, and a, and, a, and a bad thing. There's 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 no real secrets anymore. There's no real privacy if you get my drift. You know, if if I'm out and someone, you know, like I'm not talking to me, t- like you could be out and all of a sudden next day you wake up and you know. All of our social media, and I'm talking about people who are really young or at school, you know, getting beaten up. But you I mean, or you know, like yeah. there's no escape from that, yeah. you know. I mean, there's it, it's it's a different thing from my day when it's all glue stuff and gangs, you know. Like I thought it was dangerous, but it's, it's not a patch on today, you know. 
Well, Brian yeah. certainly wouldn't have been able to go to that club with the uh, gigs if social media. Yeah, yeah but just it. imagine that now. You'd, that would just be all over the and, and, and all over the internet. You know I mean? You know, every, every single place. There's no, you know, I don't know what. And also, people can make any kind of accusation they want. Then, can't they? You know, they can say, "I was there that night." You know, this is what happened. And it doesn't mean it didn't happen, but oh. but there's a, you know, just that, give- that's why that's why a lot of people think I'm homeless now, Robert. <laughs> you just have to you just have to go on with it you know you've got a great look you've got a great look well I mean that's by the way that's that, that people and I and, and and they're actually quite funny because there's, there's some people who are, who are influenced in a kind of well, so I'll say as a positive way who are who are quite reticent now to, to ask you for a picture because they've seen this picture that was of, of that went viral of me right and right. and and it was quite. And I said, "Listen, don't worry, pal. You can." I'm quite happy to take a picture because I'm only homeless on a Tuesday. Yeah, this is the rest of the time I've got, I've got a house, and they look at you like, "What? How can you only be homeless on Tuesday?" You know. So I just use it as part of the thing. Uh, people, other people get upset with it the same way that when you were playing, when I was playing, you just accepted that was the way it was. You go a rhino hide, and you just accept it, whether that's criticism um, from your the support home and away or the manager or anyone else involved you just that's just the way it was but it's your friends and family get more affected by it you know i just say well that's just this is this is happening now i've no control over any of this uh, and um i wouldn't want to be changing my life to thinking i'm going to stay in all the time you know so i mean it's like that time when i met I mean like went you and tenant spa recently you know so he, like i'm standing at the door and neil lennon walks in and he goes what the, what are you doing here? You know, so I have a chat with Neil Lennon, don't we? And then uh, you come in, don't they? And then I say, oh, it's um, uh, this is I'm on I'm on the stag. Oh, where, where is he? And all you're away over next week. You're away over speaking to these people. And I didn't realise until until he was leaving that John Richardson was there. Uh-huh. All the other lads in the stag do were applauding people who were leaving, and John had got up to match the stag day, wasn't it? Aye, aye. He John was there, aye. And uh, so, and you're just, and then all chatting to, to other people, random people, some people from Manchester were there for a day out, you know, it's just, sometimes you just have a very you interesting got, time. You've got, you got to bring the two guys down to the tennis, you've got to bring the guys down, man. Are you, are you guys? Well, these two. Yeah. Well, we've, uh, we've, we've, we've taken, well, Brian's taken us on a few uh, jaunts around the uh, well, we've we'll never been to the West. No, I've never we've been, been in the East. We've only been East. I'll get you out the West End yeah. next time, then you'll have a good laugh. Yeah, right. no, it's, it's like I say, we're not, we're not sure if we, we'll have to check. We're not sure we can afford to drink in the West End. <laughs> <laughs> we, can, we know we can afford to drink I'll, in the East I'll End. Buy, no, I'll, buy, I'll, buy, I'll buy you the drink, friend. Don't worry. Right. <laughs> and told me the, uh, the West End's a bit too posh for me, but. Um, <laughs> um, Alternative. I didn't know whether Brian had any uh, any other questions up his sleeve as he. The only one that, that sought to me is, and, and hopefully this is true, that you spent some time in the company of um, Brian Wilson. Yeah, I wrote a song with Brian Wilson, you know. And I just was wondering if he did anything for you, like make you beans on toast or something like that, or no, no, it, ask, it, it, ask, it, ask you how many sugars you have in your coffee, you know, that kind of thing. I'm not interested in anything great revelation about what Brian, I just like the idea that these people are normal and people don't understand that they have sometimes have to do normal any, things. Not, not in any way was he normal, not in, not in the slight. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, it was his two daughters, uh, Wendy and, and uh, uh, Carrie, Carrie, sorry, and um, we're working a song for them and we played it to their dad and he said, oh, he went, Dad wants to come down tomorrow and sing on it. So I was over the moon, you know. He came down with his with his wife at the time in a full nurse's uniform. Him <laughs> and the kind of like hospital, what do you call those, like, green kind of overall things that you... Down, yeah. you know, an MTV film crew. And then he, and then he sat there, we must have recorded the song over eight hours, him singing out of tune, totally ragged, you know. And at the very end... David was producing it, said, but bang, I'll give it one more go, right? And his daughter said, Is there any food left in the house? And and Dave goes, No, he's ate it all. And she goes, hey, It's okay, then he's gonna get it this day. <laughs> he did his second break because he had nothing else. He just wanted to stay as long as possible, eat everything in the house, man, you know, and just be <laughs> oh, man. He, oh, I mean, no. it, it was like uh, it was great and and uh, I think Brian Wilson, my God, it's a fantastic uh, uh, hero of mine, you know. And at the end of it, he, he's daughter goes, uh, he goes, I really love this song. He says, uh, 
And then I goes, great, thanks. And his daughter goes, uh, she give him a credit on it because uh, it'll be good having your name on it. I thought, you're absolutely right, you know. So we did, you know. And they're, all, they're on it, TV wrote it as well, but uh, by Dave. But um, to have your name next to Brian Wilson was a big bonus for me as well, you know. Previously on Life with Brian. I said, Prime Minister, stop talking. And I'm peeing against the wall, and there's two old guys behind me, and one says the other, the laddie doesn't care any better. Pubic hairs on a cracker, the worm sandwich, he actually chewed it. Subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. What's that I hear you cry in unison from podcast land? Where's the quiz? Well, have no fear. It's time for our usual ill-thought-out opportunity to test the grey matter of Brian and our guest. So, in honour of Bobby, we've called this quiz Young at Hearts. <laughs> and the reason for that is because you have to tell us which of these former Celtic players began their Scottish league careers at Heart of Midlothian. Okay, this this really is top-notch stuff, this. Um, the format, as always, is a penalty shootout. Five alternate goes each to determine a winner. And if they did begin their league careers at Tynecastle, you have to say Young. If they didn't play for the Jambos as youngsters, then say dung if it's a load of crap. <laughs> Have you both got it? Yes. Yeah. Why haven't Channel 5 yeah. picked up on these quizzes? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, let's see Ken Bruce do, do a good job with this one, eh? Right, so first of all then, Bobby, you get the pleasure of going first, and we're going to start with European Cup winner Willie Wallace. Young. Well... It's actually done. The Lisbon Lion did play for Hearts before Celtic, but his league career actually began at Stenhouse Muir before moving oh, on to I, Wraith Rovers. I misunderstood the question. Oh, I, before, oh, I, I, I knew he came from Hearts, sorry. Do, okay, do, I, I, do you want to ask that question? Ask him that question again. <laughs> no, it's okay, it's okay. Uh, my own fault. I think you should sportingly blaze this one over, Brian. So, uh, <laughs> well, I, don't think, I don't think there'd be any necessary need for me. I won't know the answer, so it's fine. Right, so Chucky, your first one is central defender Roddy McDonald. Roddy McDonald. <laughs> no, I think he played in the Highlands. Dung. Yes, no sportsmanship here. Dung, it's correct. McDonald played for Celtic first through the 70s, winning a couple of league titles before moving to Hearts in the 80s and probably gave you a few digs on the pitch on the way. Oh, yeah, well, yeah, you'd have tried to, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, but your second one is defender Mike Galloway. So we'll have to decide whether he played for Hearts first. Well, you have to say if he started his league career. Hearts. It was it, with Hearts. I'm going to see Young again, yeah. Young? Yes. Ah, sorry, zero for two. Oh. Uh, he's another one whose league career began in the lower divisions with Berwick Rangers. Uh, he then moved on to do have spells with uh, Mansfield and Halifax before before Hearts, and then he went on to Celtic in 1989. So, sorry, Bobby, that's zero out of two for now. Chance to make it 2-0 then, Brian. Uh, next up for you is fullback Roy K. Roy K. Where have you plucked that one from? <laughs> what year is that? <laughs> well... If I've never heard of him. Young. No, well, dung. No, one. it's young. It's young. Oh, sorry, young. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> I'm, I'm going ahead of myself. Yeah, yeah, young. Real name, uh, Robert, uh, made over 140 appearances for Hearts before moving to Celtic in 1977 as cover for Danny McGrain. So that kind of... Oh, yeah. He would never have got a game there, would he, if he was cover for Danny, would he? No, he played about four or five times, I think, according to my uh, research. All right, so I think that's all right. You're two behind here, Bobby, so you've got to make some ground up. Okay, so yours is goalkeeper Gordon Marshall Sr., born 1939, just to distinguish him from his son of the same name. I'm going to go young again. All right, well, you've got your name on the board at last. Uh, It is young, you're correct. Uh, Gordon made his debut for Hearts, age 17, winning two Scottish titles in the 50s before he moved to Newcastle. From there, he moved on to Celtic in 1971, making just one competitive appearance in the European Cup. I get the feeling there's some guesswork going on in in this one. (laughs) Right, I'm going to make sure I've got the right question this time. Uh, Brian, your third one is Chris Chevlain. Never heard of him either. (laughs) Dung. Oh, he's opened the door. It's young. Chris played over a hundred times at Hearts before a move to Celtic Park in 1967. Uh, only oh made... yeah, yeah, 67. Yeah, it was three. Wow. Well, it doesn't matter. Does that? You know, were you saying that because you 
weren't born, it didn't happen. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> yeah. Before my time. I, I was born. Before my time. I was born, yeah. Um, I'm trying to I was born then. Yeah. Well, you were nodding, Bobby, so I assumed you heard of him. Exactly. Uh, I made a handful of appearances before moving to Hibs. Eventually ran the Chevlain Bar in Springburn. Glasgow, which is still run by his family. Uh, he sadly, oh. sadly passed away earlier this year. So that's another one to put on the pub crawl list. The, uh, the, I, I will put the, on, yeah. the Chevlain bar in Springburn. Yeah. <laughs> right. So we are two on to Brian and this is your penultimate kick, Bobby. And yours is Davy Russell. I'm going young again. Well, it's worked again. That's two two. It's going straight hey! down. It's going straight down the middle <laughs> yeah. every time, hoping the keeper yeah. dives out the way. <laughs> exactly. <Okay. laughs> well, uh, Davy's backstory is this: he started at Broxburn, but began his Scottish league career at Hearts in eighteen ninety ninety. Won uh, the inaugural season of the league and won the championship with them a few years later. Uh, he moved to Celtic, where he became the first player to win the title with two different clubs. Oh, wow. amazing! Okay, so what, what what are we on the scores now? Two each, two each, it's two two. Two, 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 two. But two Brian's each, got yeah. one in hand, doesn't he? So, yeah. uh, your Brian, your fourth kick is Darren Jackson. Dung, dung with a D, a D. Yep. Correct. Yeah. Darren's league career did begin in Edinburgh, but with Meadowbank Thistle. Uh, played for Celtic in the late nineties before moving to Hearts. I'd be alone, yeah. So he's uh, so he's, he's calm under pressure. Yeah, I can't okay. lose. Can't you lose can't lose. lose. No, and again, we haven't uh, <laughs> we haven't had the time to write a tiebreak question. But we've got to get there first. So, Bobby, <laughs> you're you've got to, you've got to get this to at least force Brian to uh, to get his final kick. So, your fifth and final one is Barney Battles Senior. <laughs> Arnie, Arnie Battles. See? Yeah, exactly. Oh my God, I'm going to go young again. Well, you've put the pressure on. You're right. So, um, hey! yeah, he, he like, <laughs> he, um, he initially played for Bathgate <laughs> before making his league bow with Hearts in 1894. Uh, he won the league with them before moving to Celtic, doing the same. Um, and after two spells with the boys, he died of pneumonia, aged just 30. Oh my God. Yeah. So it comes down to this, Brian, this to win it. And and would you believe it? What a coincidence. Brian, you're closing the quiz with Barney Battles Jr. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Dung. Oh, yes. So never in doubt, Dung. <laughs> Son of the aforementioned Barney Sr. He was born after the death of his father, after who he was named. He was capped for Scotland like his dad and played for Hearts like his dad, but never played for Celtic. So you can't claim credit for that because you obviously guessed. But uh, you just done it. Well, well, I mean, uh, well, uh, why would I know the history of Hearts from exactly. Lodi, You know, he, he didn't play for Celtic. You know, I've, I knew about his, his dad, of course. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll uh, point in, point in the direction of the ones that <laughs> did play for Celtic that you didn't remember, like uh, who was it? Um, Roy K. Roy K. Never heard of him? <laughs> yeah, in your words, never heard of him. But uh, poor old Roy. <laughs> Um, so another win for you. I hope it doesn't listen to this. Well, <laughs> it does. <laughs> He'd be the only one if he did. <laughs> <laughs> so another victory for McClare after a bad start to the uh, season. You've, you've, you've won a couple recently, haven't you? I'll have to make these a bit more tricky, I think. Uh, well, well, I've just guessed. Like, <laughs> I've guessed better. I've guessed better. I'm, I'm going to make that more tricky. Well, that was your penalty <laughs> technique anyway, wasn't it? I bet. Well, that, uh, yeah. <laughs> McClare's Mailbag Amongst the summer holiday postcards home, Matthew's got mail for Brian and Bobby. Okay, uh, forgive me, I haven't read these yet, so we're pulling them fresh out of the, the sack. Uh, Ryan Coyle kicks us off with one for you both. If you could change anything about your careers in the past, what would it be? Or are you both still young at heart and you wouldn't want to change a thing? <laughs> mm-hmm. Good question. Um, what would I change? That's a very good question. Uh, let me think. Yeah, I think I don't think I would have sacked. We sacked a guy in the band, Russell, from the group, one of the founder members. I think I, I would have definitely not sacked him if I could if I could go back in time. Did he? Is that the Blue Bells? Yes. So was he around when you reformed the group, or did he not pick up the phone? He, 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 no, he was. He came on top of the porch with us too. Uh, he lives in Brighton now. So, uh, but he, we, we don't. We don't. Back then, he was a real 
big part of the spirit. I, I think we missed them afterwards. Good in the dressing room, as they would say, as if he was a footballer. Yeah. Yeah, just, just a lovely guy, man. Just a really, cool, really good guy. Yeah. The guy we got in was great too, but we've got a guy called Craig Gannon who let, later left us to join the Smiths. Yes, he, he was brilliant too. He's a, he's a brilliant guitar player, but Russell yeah. was one of us. We shouldn't have done it, you know? No, fair enough. And he, uh, you don't look like a man that had, has many regrets, Brian, to me. <laughs> Uh, well, not only the, uh, and I saw the picture again the other day, and I, I did do it afterwards, is that I wore a, when you win things, uh, they would throw staffs and hats onto the pitch, and we won the, uh, when we won the League Cup. Yes. In, uh, 92. Oh, yeah. I picked up a hat, and I put on this, I put a hat on, uh, and that's a big regret for me because are, it, it yeah. really looks as if I, I went to school in the grey bus. <laughs> there are pictures of that hat because you're cl- clutching. So the, I do, I do. I look like, oh, what yeah. am I doing? So I never wore a hat again. I never wore a woolly hat. Picture up, guys. Wore, yeah, wore, wait, the picture's there. We got the yeah. picture because yeah. it's, you're oh, clutching, it's, you're clutching, if I'm, unless I'm mistaken, I'm you're clutching, clutching the, the league trophy, yeah. And the, yeah. you won the man of the match, the Alan Hardacre man of the yeah. match as well. I think you got Yeah, it's well. not, it's not a great, and from my point of view, it's not a great photograph, but <laughs> if it had been anybody else, I would have been laughing still <laughs> to this day if it had been but someone did, else, but we, it's, we, it's me. <laughs> we actually put that picture up on our Instagram a few months ago and uh, it got a huge yeah. amount of uh, love. So obviously well remembered. I thought, I think, know, that's just that, just my impression of what I look like. I just you deserve to look care. happy. You'd won the cup, and <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm not saying yeah. I you was know, smiling. Yeah, that was after the game. I'd love to have seen a picture of you about six hours after the game. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was worried there when we said about. I still had the same hat on. Yeah, <laughs> I was worried <laughs> after the game. I was worried that you would say um, you regretted doing the George Michael photo it's, shoot. It's actually time. no, 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 not that. The, yeah, the other day that somebody said that to me about that the other day that picture. That picture with that hat, and I said, "Oh, I don't, I was don't like that picture." So I didn't really like, and I've never worn a hat since. And he said, "Have you still got the hat?" And I'm like, "Are you kidding?" No, no, mm-hmm. I just thought you might you might keep things like that. I'm like, mm, no. no, well, you don't know. Maybe it was in the same box as that. Uh, but I, know, I think paper. he was hoping that I still had the hat and he that I could give it to him. I'd send it to him, <laughs> or whatever. You know, the trick is, Brian, just go and get an old hat on eBay and say, uh, "Yeah, there it is." You no, know, I think you could find that one, haven't you? In particular, that, <laughs> that style of hat, isn't it? You know, yeah, I reckon it's in that box with all your old uh, copies of the Sunday Sport. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> there, there was only there would only be well, yeah, there might be more than one copy, but it's the same copy. Yeah. <laughs> go and have another look in the loft. Um, Okay, uh, next one of the three. Oriel Recordings asks, can you ask Bobby about the case of mistaken identity involving another well-known Bob who gave him sage advice playing golf in LA? And has Chockey ever been mistaken for a friend or a teammate? I think he's got that one wrong. The only, only person I played golf with that's Davis in LA is, is Jack Nicholson and uh, Dennis Holter. I don't know his I, I, I think he's talking about a, a mix-up story with another with Bob Dylan that happened, but so you're never mistaken for Jack Nicholson, no, just for the record. Mm-hmm. No, Jack Nicholson did say to me, never name drop his name. So <laughs> <laughs> well, he, might, he, he might be listening, so he better be careful. <laughs> I've always stopped to that, you know what I mean? <laughs> never name drop his name. Yeah, no. It's like it's just like that thing though. That we, we, there was a lad who played golf on uh, Saturday. It's the first time he's ever played golf, Robert. Oh, yeah. And it's good sense, coincidentally, it's called Robert. So he's the first time he's ever played golf. And I'm going, I said, what a great story you've got to just drop it in, you know? Yeah, yeah. My first game of golf was at uh, Druid's Glen, you know? People go, what? Your first ever round of golf? Yeah, it was some little, you know, municipal course somewhere in Ireland, you know? I smashed it, you know? But I thought that was a brilliant so, story. Uh, come on, how did he play? <laughs> what did he shoot? Um, he shot 160 something because <laughs> May, oh David May and Lee Martin, David May and Lee Martin gave him 125 shots and took the money off him. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't realize because he, he didn't realize over, he, I didn't realize this because he's playing in the same group as me. And, uh, and David May kept saying to him all the time, what, what that was, he was counting them, but David May's counting his shots. Right? He's going, nah, that, that was an eight there, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, that was an eight. And I'm thinking, why is he bothering it? Because when it's a team game and we try to score, Stable for the whatever. And I'm like, why is he, why is he counting his strokes, you know? Until we were sitting and having a drink uh, in the, in the clubhouse. 
and uh, they they get, want to get a picture taken. And there's two of them, Lee Martin and uh, and David May and Roberts in the middle. They're holding up a fan of I think it was a hundred pound each that he'd bet. I was like, I know that's that's why you were counting his shorts. <laughs> 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 Because <laughs> sure. he asked me, because Robert said, do you think it's a good bet? I went, no. I says, no, no, no. You'd have to get about 150, and it'd been closer to 150, but they, they, they just, they done them in. They did them over. Well, 200 I, quid down. I've been, more, had a good time. I'd be more disgusted if you hadn't diddled me out of that $10 in, in, uh, Houston. It's obviously, <laughs> it's obviously drummed <laughs> into you, actually. I'll tell, players. I'll tell, I'll tell Robert that story in the tenant spa because yeah. it's better, you know. He keeps the, uh, you know, just, the just, and, just for the record, Robert, he keeps the $10 in his wallet. So every time, <laughs> every time he sees me, he pulls it out to wind me up. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, you, That's the way to do, by the way. Brian, you ever been mistaken for a teammate or a, anybody? I, I um <laughs> again forgive forgive me if I've told this story. We, when we were with Scotland, Robert, we used to go to Glen Eagles Hotel to prepare. Yeah. And when Andy Roxburgh was the coach, we would go to Glen Eagles Hotel, and it was always a great joy. And it was we went into the Glen Eagles Hotel, and I'm at reception, and, and um, a Scottish rugby international player came up and started talking to me, John Rutherford, good great player for for Scotland in the eighties, and he's talking to me, right. And and I've quite realised that he's talking about the game yesterday. Why well, the game yesterday? And you did a good game. You did. What about this and what about that? And I've quite realised is that he's no idea that I am not Ali McCoyst. <laughs> <laughs> at which point, at which point, it's just starting talking to me about the game, and I'm not saying anything because I think this is this is going to be a good story at some point in my life. I said, just let him keep talking. I didn't say, I didn't say anything, you know, but Koisty, Koisty then just appears at the side of me, you know, can I, can I appear like, okay. And, and he went, he, John Dodd looked at me, he looked at Koisty, he looked back to me, he went, oh, fucking hell. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <I'm> a... <laughs> The, que- the question is, would you have, pre- <laughs> would you have played along with it if he hadn't busted you? You could have. I, I didn't, I didn't say anything. I just kind of, <laughs> answer kind of back up to you, without, and it's kind of puzzled that I'm not going into the detail of it because I hadn't seen the game, you know. But <laughs> I'm just thinking, I'm, I knew the score was, I knew the score, no, but I hadn't seen the actual game, you know. So I just let him go. I thought, this is if I'd have done this, I'd have been mortified. So I'm just going to let him keep going. I'm just, I'm just <laughs> thinking, he realizes, I'm just thinking, <laughs> I'm just, I, was in, I was enjoying myself too much, though. Know, I, guy, I, I can't like, believe you didn't no. see the chance to say to him, yeah, look, mate, don't tell anyone about this, but I'm thinking of signing for Celtic next season. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> I, I, I think, I think, when I, I think probably Coisley just appeared at the time I was ready to just yeah. go, you know, so. Yeah, I would, I'd have been disappointed if you hadn't done that, given half the chance. Um, right. We're back from our holidays finally. Um, and Cumbrian Day's back from his holidays as well. Um, and here he is. Question for Chucky. Um, Early in the season, but predictions for the top four in the Premier League and predictions for the top four in the Scottish Premier League. Top four, as assuming he's talking about football in yes. the Scottish Premier League, will be Celtic, Rangers, Aberdeen and Motherwell. In England, it will be, and not in a particular order, Liverpool, Tottenham, Manchester City and Newcastle. Okay, but uh, sitting on the fence. United there. fifth or six. Okay, honesty, fair enough. Can't argue with that. Would you disagree with any of that, Robert? No, I didn't mention Arsenal there, did I? Ooh. Oh. Have to be Arsenal. Who are they, they, they going to replace? Arsenal, City, Liverpool, and Tottenham. Oh, so Newcastle. So Newcastle. Newcastle gets the beat. Okay, well, just take a note of this, Mark. We can we can write down and check. <laughs> Yeah, yeah well. <laughs> any uh, any disagreement from you? I think Bobby? Brighton will get in the top four. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It could be. I think, they've got the, I think they've, they're the, the the outsiders in this one. I think that, it's funny. I, I, I didn't mention Man U there. I don't think Arsenal are even going to get in the top four either. Man, you know. Mm, bit more, uh, well, no, I think they will. Yeah, yeah. But, but uh, we'll see then. We'll, we'll, we'll keep those ones and then. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll go Arsenal versus Brighton for the top four. Then. There we go. Uh, okay. we'll, we'll remind you at the end of the season. And, we'll have, um, uh, we'll have uh, a tanner on it. <laughs> uh, not ten dollars. We'll, 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 we'll have a five. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't deal in fives. He doesn't even bend. Oh. Over. He doesn't even bend over I'm, to pick them up. 
Ten dollars must be worth about five on that, is it? Remember we were in I've that, got ten dollars. Is that? I remember we were in that bar in Glasgow that time, and you just pointed at the floor and said, "Look, there's a fiver there." And I ran over and picked it up, and I thought, "Why didn't you pick that up?" And then I realised, yeah, you obviously That's can't it. be bothered to go and pick that up. But I knew him. I know how much joy you get out of finding money. So it's like <laughs> yeah, you, you do. It doesn't matter how much it is. There's just something great about um, finding money. Well, you, you found you found money. They opened, didn't you? Yes, just after you cash the open the open Robert was cashless, right? So it was cashless. He found there's a tenner he found. He found a tenner on the floor just after Brian left to go back into his into his VIP tent. And uh I found a tenner on the floor. Found a tenner on the floor. And I thought, well, the first thing to do when you find money is obviously go and buy a drink. But one, the open was that expensive. I don't think a tenner would have covered it. And two, it was uh cash it was card only, so I was screwed. I had that tenner in my pocket for for about a week. And the shit's open was like that. Yeah, the, 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 as well, yeah. Was it, was it good? It was, a bit, it was a bit disappointing in television, I thought. Uh, the first uh, well, it's just I'd never been I'd never been to the Open before, Robert, so the experience was fantastic. And I, I, oh, again, I was, I, there was a, I had that uh, opportunity to go and have the VIP <laughs> thing where I got chastised for taking two bacon, well, it was a full thing, <laughs> bacon, sausage, egg, yeah. sandwiches out. I thought I was being cute. I had them in a bag. Of the right <laughs> pie and I, but I gave them, I gave them to, I gave them to Matthew it be, right outside. Be. I should have led them round the corner, you know. Yeah, it was, uh, I wish it'd be there. Yeah. Could have got banned from the VIP. I was only, I didn't seen any golf by then. <laughs> you can't watch it anyway. It's, it's, too, it's too hard to watch golf. You have to watch it. Hospitality. Oh work. no, it was, it was. Well, we went round. It was great. It was a great to yeah. walk round and see yeah. them different. And see, trying to find Matthew when all the bars were called the same thing was a riot. Yes. And all, you know. <laughs> yeah, we um we realised that every bar there was called the Open Arms. So Brian was saying, I'm "Outside the Open Arms," and I was saying, "Yeah, I'm outside the Open Arms." And it went up, this went on for about an hour, and then we suddenly realised that every bar was called the Open Arms. So, <laughs> yeah, the well, there's two by the same hall, weren't there? That was the thing. Wasn't yeah. There's two by the. Yeah, yeah, so by the time... Next time, next time, take me with you guys. I want to go. Absolutely. I'm sure Brian will get you in All the right, VIP man. tent. But, um, yeah. With that, we strike a final chord on this episode, and our thanks go to Bobby Bluebell for being with us. Cheers, Bobby. Cheers. Thanks for having me, guys. Uh, what are you up to with the band for the rest of the year? Well, we're playing on Wednesday at a charity event, uh, and that's just going to play next week another one fruit market, and then we've got two, we're doing streaming. We've got a lot on, a lot on until Christmas, so... Um, then we're going to start recording again, so take it from there. We're good. Yes. Brilliant. Brian, Matthew, thank you both as well. Uh, loved it. Thanks, guys. Thank you. That was been a, a great pleasure. Thanks, Robert. Yes, thanks, Brian. Thanks for asking. Hope we'll see you soon. Thanks for listening, folks. And don't forget to subscribe on your podcast platform of choice and follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Brian McClare Pod. We're back soon with another special guest, so come back again soon, won't you? See you then. Life with Brian, talking films or music. Life with Brian, talking TV and food. Life with Brian, talking trivia and exercise. Life with Brian, it's different every episode. Life with Brian, talking politics and football. Life with Brian, it's different every episode. Life with Brian, life with Brian.